Hey guys, it's been a while since I've broadcast to you, but uh, it's a beautiful Friday morning here in Dallas, Texas. Wanted to let you guys know my background real quick. Uh, about two and a half years after discard, married 20 years, that's a long time. Two kids, two teenage kids, well one's about to be an adult. Anyways, a lot of you already know me, but those of you who don't, I wanted to share that. Okay, so it's been it's been a couple months, maybe since some of you have since I posted. Maybe some of you have seen me. Some of you said I don't want to see this guy. Um, but have you got no contact yet? What's up? Hmm. Look, for those of you that don't have any kids with an arc, you can get out. You can get out now. Hopefully you've watched a lot of videos and you've read a lot of books. These people aren't worth your time. These people will suck your time away from you. I'm at a point now, I'm in a relationship with a giver. It's so different, so different from what the relationship with, what, with my ex was. And you know, that's one thing too is that it's been two and a half years. I took 19 months after discard to not date, and just discover me, because I read books, watched videos that said that's the best thing to do. Not to go out and find happiness from somebody else. That's kind of why I allowed the narc in, because I didn't have enough love in myself. I didn't love myself. I didn't feel I was worth anything, especially after the the devaluation stage and the discard, yeah, that was really rough. So maybe that's where you are. Maybe that's where some of you are where you really need to take that time. Figure it as a, you know, read some books. Figure out what it is that you want, that you like. These guys will suck your identity away from you. And look, they, they're just them, okay? They're not this all-powerful person that they make themselves out to be. In our head, they take up a lot of space in our head, and the perception, the perception of them in our head can be really overpowering, like they're really dominant, like they have this magical control over us. Because they do get in our heads. But they're just sick people. I mean, they're just like, they just had a rough upbringing maybe or something, I don't know. I used to try and know everything about it. Why, why, why do they? Why does she treat me like this? I don't treat her like this. It's not right. It's not fair. Well, it is. It just is. And once you figure that out, and that there's nothing you can do about it, there is something you can do. There's nothing you can do to change them. But the only thing you can do is walk. Walk away. Usually what's holding us back is fear. For me anyways, it is fear. What would people think? What if I don't find anybody again? Well, I'm here to tell you, you can find yourself, maybe for the first time. And that is so cool because when you find yourself, you know who you are, you accept yourself. You're able to just be with yourself. You can be in a room by yourself. You can be by yourself for a week. And it doesn't matter. Then you go out with friends. You meet new friends. As you change, you shed friends. Friends, people that you thought were your best friends. A lot of them are narcs too. But then you go out and you start enjoying life and enjoying these people see you differently. The new friends see you as the new you. They don't know the old you. They don't know all the hangups and things that you had. And then you meet somebody that comes along and you can be okay with them, or they can go away tomorrow and you'd be sad, but you know you'd be okay because you're okay with you. You're not afraid, you're not living in this fear thing. And there's so many good people out there, so many good people. I tell you, it's just, uh, it's just such a different place to be. 
And you can get there. You can get there. I'm telling you, you can get there. I've seen other people do this. I set up a secret uh, Facebook group, and we all kind of track each other's progress. People that I started out with, you know, like we went to first grade together, learned all about narcs, and we were upset and sad, and then now we've graduated high school together. I can never go back to that person I was. My self-respect won't allow it. But it takes work. But being around the narc takes a lot of work. And it sucks the living life out of you. Don't be like that. <laughs> don't be like that, please. Please, just... If you don't want to break con uh, go no contact with them, then, then just... I don't know, temporarily take 90 days, say, I need 90 days away from you. And here's the secret. They need you more than you need them. Unless they get new supply. You know, they're always trying to upgrade. It's whatever's best for them. I mean, that's what narcissism is. Me, me, me. So, I'm at a thing now where I'm, um, about this lens. I am, it's the end of the school year and I have kids and so one of my daughters is graduating and so we are getting together. The whole family, my family, my parents are coming in, the ex's parents are coming in and my goal is to minimize drama because I can feel it being stirred up little text here and there, little messages. I won't go into details, but here's some tips for some of you that have that situation. Or tips when you have to be. Listen, this is when you have to be around your, your ex. If you don't have kids, you don't have to be. But if you have to be for social events and football games, soccer games, things like that, gymnastics, what you do, and this was hard at first, it's easy now because she takes up like this much of my brain where before it was like but what you have to do is kind of fake it till you make it. at least I did okay so when I see when I see her I just hey how's it going and keep walking or I'll be on my phone hey how's it going oh need to get that phone call hey how's it going just but just have like I've already got my exit strategy they say, they say that like, like police officers, they've been trained like when they walk into a, when they walk into a building or something, they're always training where the exits are. If in case something happens, they know. I've talked to cops like that. That's what they do. They, when they go into a, like a restaurant, they've seen so much crap, right? That they, they know that robberies can go down. So they're always looking at the exits and they know right where to exit. If something were to happen, fires even, you know. That's how you want to be. You want to have your your plan of exit strategy, your exit strategy already in your head. And it gets, it, after a while, you get used to it. It doesn't take so much thought, but at first it does, you know. Psyching yourself up in the car like, okay, I'm not going to be there for an hour. And, like, I had one thing where my cell phone was on, like, 1%. And I said, hey, I need to take some pictures of you. Let me go out. There. I'll be right back. And then I went out to the car and I charged my phone up. I didn't have to run to be, I didn't have to be around the narc. It's okay to have excuses like that. Then after a while, you just don't give a shit. But, but I know up until then, it's, it's, it can be like unbearable, especially when they bring in their new supply or whatever. But you just be polite and say, hey, how's it going? And, in, and expect that they're going to throw barbs at you. And you just smile and yeah, uh-huh, that's nice. Or, no, no, that's interesting. That's interesting. And that's it. You don't ignore them, but you don't really treat them with respect. I mean, you don't really... In front of my kids, I just, I just, I'm polite. That's it. That's it. I don't emotionally engage. I'm a different person now, so it doesn't, 
like, like if somebody called me a purple people eater, it wouldn't upset me because it's not close to home, right? Right? Like I don't see myself as purple people or whatever. But if somebody calls me weak or something like that, that affects me because it's because it's fears that I already have about me. So you just stay away from people that that know you better, that know the fears, that will emotionally abuse you. But don't think everybody. I mean, if uh, yeah. look, it's so inst it's so automatic now when I when I'm around people that are just I've I, I'm listening to my gut. So when I'm around people now that are that I get a bad vibe from. I just, just quietly exit, quietly leave. Don't call them back. Don't try to hang out with them. Turn down their phone calls, send their calls to voicemail. You can do that. And you know what? You're not a mean person. You're just taking care of you. That was a little bit of an adjustment too. Is uh, I felt like I was being a mean person. You know what? That's what healthy people do. Healthy people just keep people the f out of their lives that don't have any business being there, that don't build them up or provide benefit to them in some way. You could say it's selfish, but it's a it's a self-respect type of thing. It's not you're not mean if you're taking care of you. Now, initially, when you're trying to do all this, it's going to feel like that, and you may go overboard or something. But it's just balance. You're just getting your balance. In other words, the feelings you're feeling right now, if you're having all this crap, those go away. You know they're only temporary, right? They're only temporary. They're only temporary. But it's how, it's how you, what actions you take now that are going to determine how you're going to feel in the future. So if you read a book like Psychopath Free, it's going to help you give, a, give you a better understanding to, so you know that it's not your fault, that it's... That other person is playing on those emotions, those little cracks that you have in your um, in in your emotions, those little weaknesses. But you can work on those weaknesses. Don't worry about that. Just get away from them. Just walk away. The narc will tell you things. Don't listen to words. Watch actions. I, that's been the most. It's one of the most profound things I've ever really totally. Uh, just accepted and really, in, um, I'm trying to think of the word, but I really, I, I accept that now and I, I live that. I don't, like people's words used to count 90% of what they said and they, their body actions with 10%, but now I flipped it around. So somebody tells me they love me, they really want to be with me, but they can't make time to see me. You know, they say they love me and everything, but if they can't make the actual time to see me, then it's like, not compatible you be, look there's some people you just may not be compatible with doesn't mean they're narcissists but but anyway so yeah uh, Barbara says it's a, it's temporary but it really hurts like no other pain yeah and it feels more painful because it feels like part of you is that part of you may have died like and that's and that may be true it may feel like that because you're you got your identity tied up with this other person. You get your validation from them. And I'm telling you, I don't get I don't get validation from really anybody. I mean, I I do pray, um, so I do have that connection with the higher power. But from one person, I I don't get that. I don't rely on one person too much. But here's a cool thing: I've got a healthy. I've got a very healthy relationship right now with somebody that's a giver. And I've never had that before. And it's like, I mean, somebody that like, like there's no, <laughs> I was telling somebody else this the other day. It's like, there's no games to just action. She just, she just does things for me. Just because she thinks it's normal. It's, yeah, well, yeah, of course I want to take care of you. You did this or whatever. Oh, I'm so proud of you. She said, I'm so proud of you for, for this. Or, I mean, with the narcs, they're always, there's always a, there's always a chess game going on in there, you know, it's a, wow.
well, I'm going to do this, and then you get this from me. And it's like they're always keeping tabs, but the, the only thing is the tabs that they keep, I mean, I can understand people keeping tabs. Like, hey, you know, I've done all this for you, and you haven't done this for me. I mean, that's normal. People get to do that. But the thing with narcs is that the things you did for them, they magically erase them in their mind, and then they create all this new things that you haven't done yet you haven't done for them and so that justifies in their head why they they're not going to do anything for you it's total it's transactional love it's just it's not even really love it's you know um it's just not a it's not a healthy thing so the longer i go on the strategy this new journey if you will the strategy the journey the longer i go on this the more i'm realizing that they are just they're just really miserable, envious, jealous, mean, bullying people. And the whole thing with them, um, they get that addiction. We get that addiction with them because because of the ups and downs. You guys know that, right? You're, you're, there's chemicals in your brain, like just like a drug, where you know you need them, you don't need them, but it's there's science behind it where you know if you if you're around somebody and they're always up and down like you're you're feeling really good they make it feel really good and then they treat you like shit the next day boom you know why why are they doing this must be something wrong with me they treated me really good yesterday and then but that that whole up and down thing that's that's why it's kind of hard to break break it off with them and when you meet somebody like normal it feels like like you're you went from eating you know super 1800 calorie cheesecake factory cheesecake now you're eating like just crackers you know it just the whole the whole like feeling good and then feeling sick and you know like with the cheesecake and now you're eating like you know bread you know multi-grain bread or whatever with a little bit of butter on it it's like it's not the same sensation but it's the bread's actually better for you, but, you know, it's still processed. I mean, technically it's not. But, but anyways, you, you guys know what I'm saying. But when you get your self-respect back, you take care of you. You feel better about yourself because you are taking care of yourself. You get the feedback. You lose the dress size. You lose the pant size. And it's good. It's really, I can't tell you. I mean, I am telling you, but I can't express to you through this video, through words, how good you can feel and it's not but it's like a solid thing it's it's uh, like you don't see me like hey everybody I just love the no I I just feel really good like all the time now where it used to be like oh the other shoe's gonna drop the other shoe's gonna drop something's gonna happen that expectation of something bad happening that hasn't been around for a long time now I mean, there's always, uh, there's always, there's still some, th not always, no, don't say always, there's still some things that I still think about that could happen in a relationship, but here's the thing, I know, like, it doesn't create fear in me anymore because I know I'd be okay, I know I'd be alright, because I've been there, I've been 19 months alone, I was fine, actually some of the best, it was some of the loneliest, but it was also some of the most um, inspiring moments because I didn't have anybody on purpose. I didn't have anybody to rely on. You know, I shed all of that crud out. So I'm gonna be seeing the narc a lot. I don't even want to see the narc because I don't, it doesn't take up space anymore. So I'm gonna call her the X, probably from now on, but you guys don't know what I mean if I say X. If I say X, you say knock, knock, X, knock, if you say it. No. But you guys know what I mean. So I'm going to be seeing the X over the next couple days uh, for all these events. And I'm mentally prepared. I'm okay with it. Um, I know what to do. I know what not to do. <laughs> I know not to engage. Just be polite. Just be polite. But have self-respect. So, anyways, guys. Sorry it's been so long since I made a video, but I wanted to share this with you. Um, 
I know I need to make videos. I feel like I need to make videos because I need to let you guys know it's going to be okay. It's just temporary. It's your thinking. It's your thinking tied into emotions. Look, re, uh, do a lot of this. Uh, this this helped me a lot. It depends on where you're at, but you know, if you're kind of like gone no contact and now you're like wondering what to do with your time, there's uh, videos by Eckhart Tolle, E C K A R T, I believe, T O L L E. He talks about living in the present moment, which is what kids do, which is what a three-year-old does, a four-year-old does. They live right for right now. The narcs, what the narcs have done with our brain is they get in and they twist them around and everything, and they make us fear, fear the future. Uh, when, and then when they want, like, they want our attention, they this power and control. They they mess with our, they mess with our present moment, which is fun and exciting and here and now, and that's the way we should. Be, I believe that's the way we should live to really get the most out of life, to really feel good about life. Can't do anything about the past. It's done. It's history, right? But it's still in here, right? You can do something to get rid of that, but that's just cre creating more of a thing to live in the present moment. The future's not here yet, so you can't do anything about that. But you can, you can do little things now now in the present moment to affect the future. And that's what I did. I just, I spent 19 months alone, reading, looking at the videos. And now I'm at a point, wow, where the relationships, the people that are in my life, my circle of friends, I have to admit it's smaller because I made, but I've made it smaller. I just, I mean, I'm still like Facebook friends, you know, Facebook friends of people, um, just because of, you know, I'm a good citizen, right? But when it comes to spending my time where I, where I hang my hat, where I spend time with people, it's it's only with people that I feel good around. And that's the barometer, that's the measuring stick. It's really easy after, you get the hang of it, it's really easy. You, you sit by somebody, you've trained yourself to you listen to your gut, and if you feel good around that person, you they become your friend. And they feel good about you, it, it's, it mirrors back. But if you override that, if you've developed it and you override it, you can tell. You're like, oh wait, I'm, that's not healthy. This person's treating me like crap, yet I'm trying to like get another date with them or you know, try to hang out with them. Why? Oh, because they're popular and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but if you feel like crap around them, it's not worth it. People will have more respect for you and people will never respect you more than you respect yourself. So, you know, I just, I just exit from people like that. But I found by exiting and shedding all this these, these friends, I found that I can do it and I can be okay. And like I said, the relationships are better. They're more wholesome. They're, they're, they're easy. They're easy. You, you don't have to like game it out. You know, I still want to game it out, but I, I don't have to game it out. Like I used to with the narc. I have to figure out what this and plan B and all this. No, with the, the friends, it's like you go out and if something comes up, you change it and it's, and just the body language, just the way, just the tonality, the way they say things, it feels like natural. <laughs> it feels good. It feels like effortless, I guess is the word I'm trying to say. But it takes a lot of effort before then, at least it did for me, to get this right. To know that my thoughts are not reality, Eckhart Tolle, all this kind of stuff that my feelings are not reality, it's how I feel about something, and feelings are only temporary. But my gut, that's been a really good measuring stick. So how do, you know, how do I feel around this person? I feel like shit around them. Okay, that was just one time, maybe I was physically not feeling good. Go back the next time. How do I feel around them? I still feel like shit. Maybe it's them, um, okay, I'm out of here. You know, you don't have to tell them you're out of here, you just, you just, your actions, you let your body take over and naturally go away from them. So, anyways, okay, I'm gonna end this video now, I promise. Love you guys. I'll read your comments here in a little while. Um, but just know that these people will take up this much of your brain when you get healthier. Just choose to get healthier. I know, that little ounce of self-respect that I had left, I took that and I said, damn it. I knew how I was before the, this relationship with the snark. I knew I was better than this, and I built on that. And you can too. All right, love you.